Hi there and welcome to our Ohm's Law discussion as applied to automotive electrical circuits. We chose automotive electrical circuits because they're very basic yet they provide all the various elements that you need to understand to really be able to work and use Ohm's Law. So we'll start out here by pointing out the electromagnetic force which is listed down here, electromagnetic force, which has a label symbol of E. It's an aggressor. It wants to do stuff. Now you'll see people talk about water pipes and pressures and all that crap. Electromagnetic force is an imbalance of charges. And they want to do things. They want to neutralize themselves, but they have to go through other things to neutralize themselves. All things in the physical world try to reach neutral balance point. So if our EMF source is a battery, the battery wants to discharge. It's looking for some way to discharge. If the EMF source is a generator, it's looking for a load so it can apply power to a load. So the aggressor wants to do stuff. Resistance in a circuit is what controls the aggressor. This controller, which we call resistance, limits the aggressor. It limits what the aggressor can do, how fast the aggressor can give off its power. And the result is what we call current, and the symbol I is used for current. C stands for coulombs in the physics world, therefore we had to use I. Notice that the current is dependent upon both the voltage, the EMF, and the resistance of the circuit. So the current is actually a result of the other two functioning together. And when anytime you have current flow, you have power transferred from the electromagnetic source to the load. So this power is stuff getting done, which we call work. It's dependent upon both the voltage, electromagnetic force, and the resultant current of the circuit which are both listed above. So as you can see, resistance does limit current flow and that in turn limits power transfer. So these four symbols, I didn't write the symbol for power is P, these four symbols interact with very predictability. Down here we have the functional description power, P, is the function of power, and the unit of measure is watts. And electromagnetic force, the function of voltage, the unit of measure is volts. And the resistance, R or omega symbol, the unit of measure for resistance is ohms. And we also have current flow, I, the unit of measure is amperes. So Charles Ohms, his nickname was Charlie, he came up with this set of rules. He said that the current in a circuit is always equal to the voltage of the circuit, the source voltage, divided by the resistance of the circuit. He also determined through excessive experimentation that the, resist the, power, the power of a circuit is equal to the voltage of the circuit times the current of that circuit. So these are Charlie Ohm's law these two equations and these two equations are going to help you solve all the problems that you ever run into in automotive electrical circuits. Okay now we need to delve into the world of algebra. It's a very big world we're only looking at a little tiny piece of that world so we're going to learn how to transpose this formula right here to get these two formulas. Because a lot of times you'll need to figure out what the voltage drop is on a circuit item. Sometimes you know the resistance of that item in the circuit. So just this formula by itself is not enough. You can memorize all three, but there's no reason to because it's very easy to transpose. So if you don't like math, now it's time to... Uh, wake up and smell the coffee because it's time to learn a little bit of math. Very little in fact. I mean, it'd be so easy you'll be amazed. So let's move on. 
there's three math rules here we're going to describe, algebra rules I should say. Rule number one, anything except zero multiplied by its by or divided by one equals itself. So the ten multiplied by one is still ten. Ten divided by one is still ten. And zero is the exception. Rule number two. Anything divided by itself except zero is equal to one. So ten divided by ten is one, five divided by five is one, one divided by one is one. Notice the zero exception again. One part of algebra discusses why zero acts differently than all the other numerical numbers. But we don't need to worry about that because in automotive circuits we're not dealing with zero of anything. There's always something, therefore we don't have to go into the whys that the zeros are different. Okay, the third rule, and this is the last rule, these simple three simple rules will get you through this whole process. Rule number three, if you do the same thing to both sides of an equation, nothing changes. So I'll put this equation. If I add 5 to the left side and I add 5 to the right side, I plus 5 is still equal to E over R plus 5. So we don't change the equations. The equation is still valid. We can divide both sides by something. We can multiply both sides by something. It doesn't matter. As long as you do it to both sides, the equation stays valid. Okay, so let's use these three algebraic rules now to transpose to get from this equation to this equation. So to get E by itself, we're going to multiply both sides by R. Therefore, the original equation, I equals E over R, I equals E over R, I equals E over R. Therefore, R times I equals R times E over R. And the rule up here says that anything divided by itself is 1, so the r's cancel out. That leaves you 1 times e. So r times i equals 1 times e. Anything multiplied by 1 is still itself, so the e is just e. Therefore, r times i is equal to e. Now we can simply flip, flip what's on this side over on the other side and flip this. We can just exchange sides. So now we just say E also equals I times R. If R times I equals E, then E equals I times R. It doesn't matter which position we put them with the relation to equal sign as long as we flip them both over. So that's how we solve that problem. Not too bad, right? Okay, let's get R by itself. To do that, we're going to have to divide by E, and you'll see why in a moment. Therefore, there is an equation, I equals E over R, I equals E over R. Therefore, I divided by E equals E divided by E over R. Now, let's just add an E here, add an E to both sides. Anything divided by itself equals 1. Therefore, we have i over e equals 1 over r. So i over e equals 1 over r. Therefore, we do the same thing to both sides of the equation. We're going to flip the fractions upside down. So we put the e on the top and the i on the bottom. We flip that one upside down. We put the r on the top and the 1 on the bottom. We're going to flip this one upside down. So now e over i equals r over 1. Any number divided by 1 equals itself. Therefore, this r divided by 1 is just plain r. Therefore, e over i equals r. Once again, we just flip two sides of the equation. We got r equals e over i. So from this equation, we derive these two equations. These three equations will solve all the problems you're going to see on the next page the exception of this equation also is used on occasion. So that's how you transpose equations. It's really not difficult, especially when it's a nice simple equation and only has three variables. And this is all you need to know to fix automotive electrical circuits. So let's move on to the next step.